What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn how to easily build platform independent flutter apps with graphical user interfaces in python using a package called flat so let us get right into it All right, so we're going to learn how to easily build platform independent and device independent graphical user interface applications in Python using a package called Flat. Now, Flat is based on Flutter, and this basically means that our final application can be run on the web, it can be run on Windows, on Mac, on Linux, on Android, on iOS, on all the basic platforms and devices that support Flutter. And all we have to do for that is write Python code, which is very convenient. So what we're going to do first is we're going to open up the terminal and we're going to install the package flat, which is written like this F L E T. And once you have it installed, you're going to navigate to the directory that you want to be working in. In my case, it's going to be programming neural nine, Python and current. And in here now I'm going to create a new flat uh, project. So I'm going to say flat or application create and then we're going to call this counter, for example. Uh, this is actually an example that is provided by the documentation. I changed it a little bit, but it's a very simple graphical user interface. It basically has two buttons minus and plus and then a counter in the middle, which shows you what the current number is. Uh, and if you want to run the application right away, you just have to go into this directory that is created then and you have to just uh, type flat run. And this is going to run the application immediately. By default, this is just hello flat. And this is already platform independent. So I can run this on Android, I can run this on iOS, on Linux, Mac, in the web, on Windows, doesn't really matter. Uh, but of course, we're going to change the code here. So you can see this counter directory was created here. And then in here, there is the main.py. Uh, file and this is what we're going to change. You can already see it imports flat as ft and it also runs in the end uh, ft.app main and main itself takes a parameter page which is of the type ft page so flat page. Um, we're going to keep this like that. We're just going to remove this here because we don't want to have the hello flat. We want to have a title. We want to have uh, two buttons and a basic box displaying the counter. And we're going to start with the title of the window. We're going to say here uh, page.title, page is the parameter. Um, and we're going to call this flat counter app. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to define the alignment of this application. So we want everything to be horizontally and vertically, so vertically and horizontally uh, centered. And for that, we're going to start with the vertical alignment, we're going to say page dot vertical alignment is going to be equal to FT main axis alignment center like this. Uh, and then we're going to create our number text box. This is going to be the text box that is going to display the current value. So I'm going to say here number uh, text box is going to be equal to FT text field. And the value in the beginning is going to be equal to zero. This is a string, as you can see. Um, and then we're going to say text align FT text align center. That is just that the text within the text field is centered inside of the text field. Uh, and we're going to define the width to be 100. Uh, then we're going to define two basic functions minus and plus click. So we're going to say minus underscore click is going to take an event as parameter here uh, as a parameter here. And, and we're going to say if the integer value remember, this is a string. So we have the value string zero, we want to typecast the value of the text box whether it's zero, one, two, whatever, we want to typecast it to an integer. And if that integer, so if the number text box value, the integer version of that is above zero, we can decrease it. I'm not going, going to allow this to be a negative number. So we're going to say here, only if this is um, satisfied, we're going to set the value to be equal to string of int of number text box value minus one. So we take the number text box value, the number text box value is, um, is a string, we typecast it to an integer to make the calculation minus one. And then we typecast it back to a string to get the value or, or to, to set the value again to a string value. And then we're going to say page update. So the page is basically the application, which we see, then we're going to say plus click or actually I'm going to copy this here. The only difference here is going to be that we don't have any condition because we can go up um, without limits. And of course, the difference is that we're going to increase by one, not decrease uh, by one. 
Yeah, so we have these two functions. And now all we have to do to make this application work is we have to say page dot add, and we need to add the individual elements. And for this, we're going to add a row. So ft row, and the row is going to contain the items in a row. So we're going to have button text box button. And this works very simply, uh, ft icon button is what we're looking for. Uh, we're going to say here ft icons dot and here we can choose one of the uh, icons that are available. We're going to use remove because that's basically a minus sign. Um, and then on click the event for this button is going to be the minus click function. So when this button is clicked, the minus click function will be called. And then I'm going to copy this. And instead of remove, I'm going to have add and here I'm going to have plus click. Important, you don't want to call the function, you pass it as a first order entity. Uh, and then we're going to say number text box here. And that is going to be right in between. So we're going to have button text box button, the text box is what we defined up here. Um, and that is basically it. The only thing that we might want to specify here is that we want to have a uh, certain alignment. So the alignment is going to be equal to FT main axis alignment dot center just so it's centered horizontally as well, not just vertically. Uh, and that is basically it, then we can start the application. And we can do that, I think also by just running the script, that should also be possible. So you just run the script. And uh, there you go. You have the counter app, you can see it works. I cannot go below zero. There you go. Uh, but of course, you can also run this with flat run. So you can just say flat run. And this runs the application here as well. That also works. All right, so this is a basic graphical user interface application. How can I run this now on the web? How can I run this on Android? Very, very easily, I can just say flat run and then dash dash web. And this is going to run this in the browser. So you can see now it runs in the browser, I have this flat application here. And it's on the web. And because it's on the web, it's already platform independent, I can open this website on Android, I can open this website on iOS, I can open this website on my smart TV, uh, it doesn't really matter. However, I can also do something else, I can say flat run Android, dash dash Android. And the great thing about this is that it's going to provide me a QR code, I also have this uh, website that I can visit from my phone. But if you install the flat app on your phone, and of course, this requires an additional installation, but it works for all the flat apps that you're going to develop in the future. Once you have the flat app on the phone, all you have to do is you basically have to um, scan the QR code, you go to the website, the website is going to immediately open up your uh, flat application. And then I'm going to show you this in a second here. Somehow lagging right now. Please wait while the application is being started. Let me try again. Maybe it's buggy right now. But the idea is that of course, you can visit the website using your phone, but you can also um, open the actual application in the flat app because the flat app can get this application that is running in Android mode, and run it in your <clears throat> sorry, in your application here. So I know this is probably not very easy to see here. Let me just turn off my eye comfort shield here. You can hopefully see the application, I can press the button and it changes the counter. There you go. So this also works on iOS with the flag iOS like this. And what you can also do is you can package this into a binary. So what you have to do for this is you have to say flat pack. And then you don't just say flat pack, you say flat pack main py. And then this is going to be turned into a standalone binary for Linux in my case, because I'm on Linux and for Windows, if you're on Windows, it's going to be quite large, it's not the most efficient thing, it uses Py installer, and we know compiling Python code does work to some degree, but it's not really something that's yeah, is a common practice, but you can do it, you can just say flat pack, and then you can package this into a binary on Linux, it's just going to be a binary file on Windows, it's going to be an executable. So dot exa. Um, and once this is done, I'm going to be able to just say, uh, point slash, and then whatever the name is, I think it's going to be main. Um, but this is going to be in a separate directory, you can see right now here built in this are um, created and the final executable or the final binary file will be inside of this. So this is the target directory. All of this is being packaged to and of course, then I can just ship these uh, ship this to someone without 
any Python installation without any packages. I can just ship the binary and they can run it and they can run the application that I built. But you're going to see here in a second that the size is going to be quite large. There you go. So now the process is finished and we can go into the disk directory. And in here you have the main file. So I can just say point slash main and it's going to hopefully there you go open up the flat application, as you can see. So yeah, this is how you can easily build platform independent device independent GUI applications based on flutter with pure Python code. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.